northern Germany, a vast open plain. If the Warsaw Pact countries did attack, they would try the easy way first, with fast-moving armoured columns pouring across the open countryside. But such open country makes for perfect killing areas, and will be defended in depth by several battle groups. Sooner or later, the enemy would be forced to come at us through the broad tracts of woodland and thick forest that sprawl across the whole area. Here the terrain can be made to work against an aggressor, and in favour of determined defenders, forward combat teams prepare to fight a shoot and scoot war against the enemy. Friendly forces. Second Battalion Grenadier Guards Battle Group is defending the Grunenstadter Wald with two combat teams up. Left, number one company. Right, number two company, ourselves. Depth, number three company. Mission. Number two company is to deny the enemy passage through the Grunenstadter Wald within boundaries. Number two company is to deny the enemy passage through the Grunenstadter Wald within boundaries. Execution general outline. This is a three-phase operation. Two platoons up, one in reserve. Phase one. You will establish your section and half section ambushes and prepare your platoon positions. Phase two will be your platoon ambushes. And phase three will be the main battle in the combat team defensive position. The area is divided into beach in the north, fur in the south. And please all note this one exit to the wood astride which the main combat team position will be. Five platoon, you will be in the furs, ambushing dog, cow and cat. Sir. Six platoon, you will be in the beach, ambushing Apollo, Saturn and Jupiter. Four platoon, you will man and dig the main combat team position. Four platoon is the reserve platoon, and to them falls the task of preparing the main combat team position for themselves and for the two forward platoons. They'll be helped by the sapper detachment with all the equipment at their disposal. They've got about 36 hours. With anything less than 36 hours, the whole combat team might have to dig in here first before moving forward to prepare the platoon and section ambushes. The important thing is to site the trenches carefully, to dig them deep, to revet them properly, and to give them good overhead protection, and then to camouflage them effectively. Every trench must be fully stocked with ammunition, ready for the forward platoons when they eventually fall back. The reserve platoon's APC should be well dug in, not just for their own protection, but as an integral part of the combat team's defensive fire plan. Since the combat team position may have to be held at all costs, it's wise to wire not just the front, but every other approach. And to mine all the possible access routes. This is, after all, where the crunch will come, so we must be prepared to hold our ground indefinitely. Tanks are nowhere near so effective in close country. The trees limit their range and their mobility. Only one tank is being dug in on the combat team's main defensive position. That's because there's only one good tank chute available. The rest of the troop and the Milan detachment can be held in reserve, covering the rear of the wood in case enemy armor tries to outflank or even bypass the main combat team position. Our mission is to deny enemy passage... The combat team commander's orders are repeated at platoon level to the section commanders or, if time is really pressing, to the entire platoon. We are setting up two individual section ambushes. Son Elshaw, you will take the left forward ambush position known as Route Apollo. Sir. Saint Moore, you will take the right forward ambush position known as Route Saturn. Sir. Corporal Gordon, Saint Boucher, platoon headquarters and three section. We will set up a platoon ambush position overlooking Route Jupiter at the bottom of the hill here. Right, move. Again, time permitting, the reserve section will dig the platoon defensive position, while the other two sections go forward to prepare their ambushes. 
Digging in has exactly the same priorities both in beech woods and in firs. The trenches must be deep. They must be properly revetted. And they must have good, solid overhead protection. This can be based on logs, and there are literally piles of these in most German forests, or on doors stripped from nearby houses, or from anything else that comes to hand. The main thing is to build a good base for the two layers of sandbags and earth, which will provide protection from the shrapnel caused by artillery fire bursting overhead in the trees. In Germany, the fir trees grow so close together, it's often difficult to find a good ambush position. In the end, it may come down to finding arcs of fire which occur naturally in the trees. Then it's just a matter of clearing away the undergrowth. In beech woods, clearing a field of fire may mean using the assault pioneers to provide a little heavier demolition. If you're only going to get one shot at the enemy, make sure it's a good one. In heavily wooded areas, radio is rarely 100% reliable. And anyway, radio silence must be maintained at least until the forward ambushes are sprung. So all the early communication within the combat team must be by line. Yes, sir. As soon as he can, the combat team commander himself will make a point of getting round to each position. He must satisfy himself that his orders have been clearly understood and effectively carried out. The left edge of those logs is where the mines are, sir. Good. Your mortar target is confirmed as X-ray 2. Well-coordinated supporting fire could be vital to a section bugging out through beech woods, where the trees themselves offer only partial cover. Single-strand barbed wire can be useful here. Strung low between the trees, it can really foul up the enemy infantry. The best deterrent, though, is the command-detonated anti-personnel mine. This will annihilate anything within a 60-metre arc. Properly sighted, it can give a subunit a 30-second start at the beginning of a bug-out. A section bugging out through fir trees gets good cover from the trees themselves being so close together. But that makes it even more important that the way back should be properly wrecked and clearly marked. Bugging out through beech woods is a different proposition. The trees offer much less protection, so it may have to be a set-piece withdrawal under covering fire. And that's something that must be properly rehearsed. <coughs> when we withdraw, this will be your position by this tree, facing that way, covering those arcs giving us covering fire across the open ground. Once we're out the open ground, we will then call you in. Yes, Any questions? Yes, sir. Right, rest of your left foot, mate. The main enemy threat is along that ride from right to left. Finally, every section and every man in that section must know how their ambush is to be sprung. Confusion costs lives, our lives, instead of the enemy's. Unless you are attacked, then as per SOPs. When the ambush is sprung, it will be by a vehicle going over the mine. Mines will be laid by the sappers and the assault pioneers to the combat team plan. The ambushes must be properly coordinated and escape routes worked out to avoid all these devices. These will be mostly anti-tank mines, positioned so as to stop the leading vehicle and cause it to block the route for those following behind which can then be dealt with by the anti-armour weapons. But the sappers and assault pioneers have another, even more important role to play. To block those routes and rides which we can spare neither the time nor the men to ambush. For this, anything goes. Anything that will check an enemy column and channel it into our main ambushes. But there's more to successful route denial than just blocking the route. Every obstacle must be comprehensively mined. Not just against armour, but against enemy personnel who might try to dismantle the block. In front of the combat team's area, well forward of the tree line, are the forward observation posts, the combat team's eyes, these forward OPs have a direct line back to combat team headquarters. 
they must be well sighted, incredibly well camouflaged, and manned by experienced observers, probably the FOO himself in one post and the MFC here in the other. First contact with the enemy has been made by our close wrecker units, well forward of our defensive line. Blowing you two, this is Tango 61 Alpha, moving back now through your location with Tango 61 Bravo, over. It's been barely 36 hours since we moved into position, and it's been a bit of a sweat getting everything done in time. It always is. Hello, two, this is 2 2 online. Ambush is set on rides. Cow, cat, and dog. All positions ready. Over. So now, everything is ready. All we have to do is wait. Close. The first enemy units we can expect will be elements of their recce forces. These must be dealt with before they penetrate too far into the woods and discover our ambush positions. Hello, two, this is 5 to Alpha. Online contact now, grid 844-687. One BMP moving southwest towards wood. I'm observing, over. The best tactic is probably a quick half section ambush, unplanned if necessary, from a prepared position if there's time. Once the ambush is sprung, and the enemy infantry begin to show their faces. Hit them with everything you've got. And then get to hell out of it. The classic guerrilla tactic. Hit and run. And keep running. Back to your prepared section positions. Because the enemy might just respond with artillery fire. Apart from the sheer noise of the barrage, there'll be a lot of shrapnel and splinters flying around, especially from air bursts. That's why we pay so much attention to good overhead protection. Otherwise, the main effect of artillery fire tends to be to create even more obstacles to the enemy's own progress. The main thrust will come in fast behind the artillery barrage. Hello, two, this is 5 to Alpha. Contact now, the grid. 852-676, approximately four tanks, ten APCs moving directly towards the wood. I'm observing, over. The whole point of our defensive preparations is to channel the enemy into our killing areas. So if our sappers have done their job properly, the only routes open to the enemy are those which will lead him straight into our section and platoon ambushes. The aim of an ambush is to knock out the enemy's armoured vehicles so they block the route for anything following behind. The leading vehicle is allowed to pass and run onto a mine. The anti-armour weapons take out the vehicles behind it. Small arms deal with the infantry, firing rapid until the anti-personnel mines are detonated. The section bug out, leaving the route blocked twice over. They've hit the enemy and hit him hard. Now they must move and move fast back to their platoon position. But the enemy may not develop his attack through the fir trees. He too might try the unexpected and regroup to concentrate his attack through the beech woods. Hello, 2 and 2-2, two, two. this is 2-3. Contact, grid, 842-675. Enemy dismounted infantry, strength approximately 30, moving southwest. Over. 2, roger, out to you. Hello, 2-2, two, two. this is 2. Acknowledge call sign 2-3's last and take action now. Send a sit rep as soon as possible. Over. OK, Sun Hill, you go left with your gun group, then your rifle group. I will take the other gun group to the right. I will spring the ambush with my gun group. Right, sir. Okay, any questions? Nothing, sir. Let's go. The ability to react to surprise situations depends on how well the defenders have wrecked their own sector of the woods. If they know their ground, 
They can set up an unplanned ambush with speed and determination and every hope of success. Burns, any messages? Nothing, sir. Once he has decided on his line of advance, the enemy will come at us along whichever routes he can, which should put him exactly where we want him. In such an open piece of terrain, the ambush is sprung with the anti-armour weapons, forcing the vehicles behind to come off the track and onto our mines. But the enemy has concentrated more forces than we expected along this route. Section! Enemy right! And we have been caught on the hop by the speed of his reaction. Ah! It can't be a simple hit and run job now. We've got to fight our way out of this one. The section withdrawal is good, fast, well executed under fire. Hello, Zulu 23 Bravo, this is 23 Bravo. Start up, start up, out. The rehearsals look like paying off, but the APC hide is too close to the ambush position, and the enemy are close on our heels. The artillery barrage that created new obstacles to the enemy's advance may also have created new obstacles to our withdrawal. That's why APCs shouldn't be parked too close to the ambush position. Otherwise, you could end up getting more than a parking ticket. The other forward section has had more success and now pulls back to the platoon's defensive position. Hello, two, on, this is two, three. Mutual Apollo mutual and Saturn sprung. Two, three, Alpha complete in my location. Two, three, Bravo has not yet returned. Over. So now six platoon are minus a complete section and they're sitting astride the main enemy line of advance. But this is more than just an ambush. It's a prepared defensive position. And they must hold it until ordered to withdraw. No, two, this is two, three. Enemy armor approaching my location now. Out. Again, the ambush is sprung when the lead vehicle runs over a mine. 
the anti-armor weapons deal with the tanks behind it. We hit and hit again and keep on hitting because this time we do not run. We stand and fight. Hello, two, this is two, three. Sitrep, as at 1320 hours, Jupiter sprung, three enemy tanks and up to 35 enemy infantry destroyed. I can hear more enemy armor in depth. We have no casualties. Hello, two, this is five to Alpha. Contact now, area grid. 855-673, approximately 10 tanks, 30 APCs, moving west towards wood. I'm observing, over. Against these sort of odds, the forward platoons could not be expected to hold out for long. So the combat team commander has no choice but to call them into the main two, defensive two, position. Two, three, this is two. Walk tall, over. Move! Move! Come on, Dylan Quarters! forward sections fall back. The FOO also makes his way back from his forward OP and will continue to control the artillery supporting fire from TAC headquarters. Now the enemy has committed himself to the area in such force, the combat team will need every weapon at their disposal if they are to carry out their mission. Number two company is to deny the enemy passage through the Grunenstadterwald within boundaries. Already they have hit him hard at every turn. Now they must stop him in his tracks. Delay him. Destroy him. Deny him passage out of the woods. If we can stop him breaking out of the area, bottle him up in the woods, force him to pour in more and more of his resources, we set him up as a prime target for our artillery. Hello, uh, Charlie, Charlie, one, uh, this is 5-1. Fire mission, four batteries, over. A Zulu Tango, one, a 2860, at my command, seven rounds, a fire flu tank, over. Fire. Fire. A fire, over. Once an enemy gets into a wooded area, we must make sure he never, never gets out alive. 